Hi, my dear friends and beloved greetings from the Andalusian mountains. I decided to make a little update video and just share what I've been going through, um, a little bit about my journey, my thoughts, my realizations. And I realize it has been a, a while since I made my last video, maybe it was February. So my apologies if I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> It's almost like, do I even remember how to do this anymore? But yes, yeah, so um, what's happened since? So basically, my last greetings I sent from the Amazon, and I was telling you about how I've been feeling a call to return to the earth and take a lot of distance from the virtual realities and social media and online activism. And it's done me a world of good. Um there is a saying that if you don't make time for your friends, you won't have any. And this is also true in terms of God. I realized that if I don't make time for God, I won't have any. Meaning I will not have God in my life. Not in the way that I would like to. No, of course, the divine is within us. That's where we come from. It's written into our blood, into every cell, into every fiber, into every hair. But do we live in harmony with it, in alignment with it, in accordance to it? Or are we living despite of it? Are we here to fulfill our own individual will? Or are we here as a conduit for the divine to enact through us? So I realized that with my passion and drive and this war cry um, against the violators, against the abusers, against the dominators of this world, um, in the battlefield of human rights and bodily sovereignty and medical freedom, I had constantly made a smaller and smaller place for God. Although I speak about the creator, I speak about his law, natural law, I practice healing arts, but what about outside of my work? Am I taking time to just sit and listen? Am I open to receive guidance and messages that may be contrary to what I'm doing? Am I open for feedback? Am I open for the divine feedback? And so <laughs> my kind of challenge over the last couple of years has been that there are so many different, in, um, what do you call them? Incentives different um, campaigns, different initiatives that I would love to pour my energy into. So much that is wrong in the world and so many ideas on how to respond to it. So many solutions and not being able to choose with the best consciousness on how to focus my energy into one particular thing. You know, there's a saying, jack of all trades, master of none. Well, <laughs> you know, some of us are like, um, Amanda Ballmer uses the, the term um, peacock minds. So <laughs> there's many different avenues, many different things that interest you and you may want to be doing all of it. And this has been me. This has been me. Um, and that's caused me to spread myself very thin. And I've gotten so many messages and emails and comments from you guys, whom I love, by the way, I love you all, asking like, how is it possible? How are you doing all this? And yes, I have to be honest that I have sacrificed a lot for it. And some of it has been my relationships. Uh, some of it has been my relationship to the divine, my own spiritual practice. And so I've realized that there are limitations to how much we are doing. And that if we are 
doing multiple things at the same time, that we could actually be inhabiting a space that is meant for somebody else. That it may not be our purpose, you know? In my case, I'm a communicator. So I can dip myself into different topics, immerse myself into the knowledge, immerse myself into the culture, and then communicate what I see, communicate what I experience. But there may be others that are far more fit to be the voice, the expert for that. And this happened with Police for Freedom. I'm an activist, I'm not a cop, <laughs> you know? I have experience of working with police. I have ideas on mediation and how to communicate with consciousness. I have knowledge on natural law. So it was a good springboard for me to be in that role to coordinate this movement for the awake, freedom-loving police. But eventually I realized that there's limitations to how it can grow. There's limitations to its credibility if I am the face of this movement, that I need to step back and I need to let someone who is an actual police officer or a soldier to take that space, to be the face of this movement. And thankfully, now we have an international uh, leader for the movement who is a police officer. So I've been able to step back from it. Of course, I'm always going to be you know, in some way connected to it uh, because I love that movement and I absolutely love any kind of initiative that is building bridges, that is helping to rebirth humanity as we know that it's possible based on true equality as souls, you know, based on true sovereignty, true respect. So yes, I have a lot of love for Police for Freedom and I'm always going to be in some way connected to it, but I'm no longer leading it. And that feels good. But of course, it was <laughs> it was a process of letting go, process of trusting things into others' hands, process of delegation, process of sharing responsibility. And I'm sure that many of you who are watching this, uh, I know a lot of you are also activists and project leaders and visionaries and, and creators of all kinds of beautiful projects. I know that many of you can relate, okay? That you too may be multitasking and co-creating and leading many different projects, but at the same time, you, same time, you may feel that perhaps there could be somebody else with more expertise who could be a better face, better voice for this thing. How do I give space for that? So that's what's happened with the uh, Police for Freedom. Uh, many of my other activism projects are still in the process of realignment. But uh, what I do know and what I do feel is that I've received a calling to change my position on the battlefield. You know, um, that's what this is, you know, like it or not, we are in a spiritual battle. And my first position was to be at the front lines, calling it out, warning about the enemy. I'm gathering intelligence and sharing as much as I could, you know, about what's actually going on. A lot of it within, through clairvoyance and through intuition and through feeling what is the enemy like and what kind of spirit they have, what kind of purpose, what kind of agenda they have. Communicating that, but also, of course, looking into facts and evidence and speaking to all sorts of professionals and experts on all different fields internationally. And that was amazing. But lately, I felt the calling to step back and reevaluate and listen listen, what is the next signpost? What is the next mission? And for me, it is to return to my spiritual work and focus my activism more on it, even more than I have. I've always intended to keep a spiritual undertone and spiritual context into everything that I share, everything I teach, everything that I'm communicating. But these days I feel like my work is to bring even more awareness on the spiritual principles of life and also on my practice um, and my experience with the plants, the ceremonial healing arts. So I'm being sent on this post, on this position on the battlefield, because that is where I have most experience. That is where I have the biggest drive, the biggest passion. And then 
by doing this, I am trusting that those places that I believe vacant uh, will be filled by others whose purpose is to take those spaces. And so by me saying, I'm no longer doing a lot of this sharing of links and informations and commenting on current you know, affairs and news that everyone should somehow follow suit and stop doing that because it's somehow wrong. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is that there may be someone else who has the drive to do that, who's recently come to discover this information or someone whose simple life purpose is that, that they are someone who's in, like an informer, you know, who's sharing awareness, who's doing a lot of street activism, talking to people, people, you know, activating them, informing them, enlightening them. That's great. Let them do that work. But pay attention whether you still have that same drive to be doing that or whether your work would be somewhere else. And so part of the calling of returning to the spiritual work is also to do with the beautiful cultural association that I have co-founded with three of my friends from Finland. And this association is called Kotiinpalo. It means returning home. And the purpose of this association is to revive indigenous culture and the natural ways of living from Finland, the sacred way of living from our ancestors. And combining the innovation and the creativity and the technology that is here with the ancient ways of sovereignty and tradition in order to create the best possible future for our children. So basically this association is all about building the structures for a legitimate, authentic, parallel system. And parallel doesn't mean it has to be separate from the existing system. It can be interlinked and intertwined, but we have to start building a bridge. So I am focusing all of my sources of energy, all of my visionary capacities, all of my, my passion on the solutions, on the creation. So I've left the battlefield of saying no for now, um, to a certain extent anyway, <laughs> to a large extent, um, until the next battle calls me perhaps. But right now, this is what I'm doing. I'm focusing on helping to revive indigenous wisdom from my own land, from Finland. And part of that is also that me and my husband are planning and organizing actually moving back north, moving up to Finland. So this is in the cards for this year as well, and we are preparing for that right now. So it's an exciting new phase of my life. And those of you who are up north, you know, let me know, send me a message. Maybe we can collaborate. Maybe we can do some sort of beautiful cultural exchange. But I truly feel that the time has come for us to stop adoring um, ancient civilizations or some faraway tribes and realize that actually we are all indigenous to the land where we come from. And that it is time for us to revive what was violently taken from us. The rich cultures, the folklore, the, the mysticism, the songs, the costumes, the foods, the language. Bring it back, resurrect it. And so I no longer encourage people to be looking for land in faraway places or settle down in Mexico or in Peru or... I was one of those people. I was wanting to leave this all behind. I was completely condemning the Western world and thinking this is like a cancerous pussy wart that I have. I don't want anything to do with. And I just want to go to the new world and, and live sovereign in the forest, you know, in complete harmony with nature. But after five years of doing that, I was shaken to awaken and I was sent on a mission to return to Europe. And that's how me and my husband, uh, we we returned to, to Spain, we ended up in Spain, was because we were told that you need to go to your people. You need to go back to where you come from and help them. Don't escape. I was very clearly told, you're not on a holiday. The reason you have incarnated into this vehicle, into this flesh, is because you've come to work, okay? You have plenty of time to rest after, <laughs> you know? That place where we all come from, that divine realm of love and peace and joy that is unimaginable, unimaginable here on earth. 
we will all return to that as long as we, you know, walk the good path in life and we, you know, serve the most high in our, in our every action and word and deed and then do our best to truly share the sacred ways, then that is our heritage. That is our pass. Okay. We will get on that divine holiday someday. But until then, we're here for work. We're here to work. So this was my guidance that I received. You must go back to Europe. You must go back to your people. And the next step moving from Spain to Finland will be being even closer to my roots in, the, in my motherland, in the land of my ancestors, but also in the center of technocracy. Finland is one of the most leading nations in terms of technocratic um, society and, and very like hygienic, sterile, contactless society with AI and robots and you name it. So what better place to go to to talk about the indigenous wisdom and natural life than that? So I'm just throwing this out there, my dear friends, you know, maybe going to Mexico is not the right place for you. Maybe you're meant to be back in your homeland in Poland or in, you know, in Czech or in Latvia or in Norway. Even if it's war torn and conflict ridden, maybe that's why it's calling you because we need healers, we need teachers, we need the creators of the new earth. So even if you feel that your own country has become overtaken by globalists and, and your culture's you know, being corrupted and rotten and, and there's very little anything authentic left or people are being oppressed or whatever it is that you may feel like a rejection towards your homeland, then have, I am inviting you to revisit that and really explore could you be one of the people who could return and make a difference in that land? Is that what your ancestors would want you to do? Is that what this earth is asking you to do? That we don't forsake any piece of this beautiful earth, that we don't give up on any of our tribes, and that these places where that cancerous, you know, materialistic, spiritually void poison is strongest, is where we need the most healers, is where we need the most courageous activists. So this is an invitation for you to ponder, for you to contemplate. And it may be that you will not be able to receive this guidance if you are too invested in your own will, you know, too invested in, you know, bringing into fruition your own human plans, which can be in alignment with the divine, but sometimes they're not. Okay, sometimes we need space and silence to be able to receive the next guidance, the next message. But it's very difficult if we're constantly online, constantly busy, constantly, you know, spreading ourselves thin, spreading ourselves thin and multitasking and working so many different projects and creating the next while the other one hasn't even, you know, come into fruition or, or haven't even finished you. We're already working on something else and we're constantly talking and blah, 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 blah. So we're so busy communicating that we're not listening. And then we may notice that actually, what I'm doing is no longer resonating in the same way, or maybe feeling, maybe may leaving me feeling um, drained. And oftentimes that means that there's some energy source is missing. Some sort of blessing for that project has been drawn away by life itself, because there's, there's another path that you're being called on. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes that draining, the feeling of exhaustion, means that you're being called to stop, listen, you know, regroup, because there's another mission waiting for you. So yes, I wanted to share these words with you, because I know that out there, many of you who are subscribed to, to my videos are kindred spirits of mine, 
we're all warriors and activists and peacemakers and healers and creators so this is just to put a little seed there that are you sure that you're listening and that you're receiving all the guidance that is around you are you receiving the feedback are you listening to your body you know what are you being shared what are you being told are you tired or is your work still giving you excitement are you still being you know like sparked with it because if not it may be that you need to rest and this is not to say that even the most fulfilling significant amazing you know purpose-driven projects wouldn't sometimes feel hard and heavy of course they can but what is the the golden thread through it do you always return to it with joy you know or some sort of readiness that you feel yes i have chosen this this is my free will choice or is there a sense of ah oh this is getting heavy i just wish i could just finish this all and just take a break well, I'm here to say you are allowed to take that break and you will still be significant and loved by the creator. Even if you lose all your following, even if you leave social media like I did, <laughs> you know, you will still be worthy. You will still be important. Your mission will still be significant. Okay, don't be too caught up in the numbers on social media or, oh, what if I stop posting for two weeks? Will I still be relevant? Yes, you will. You'll be relevant in the real world. You'll be relevant for life. Okay? We can't be too entangled in these quantitative ways that social media is, you know, placing value on us. It can distort many things if we are too dependent on the feedback that we're getting online. Think about the feedback you're getting from your body, from your family, from your friends, from life, from God. Beyond all, from God. Are you listening to your creator? Do you have a good relationship with your creator? Because if not, that is the most important relationship to invest in, in my humble opinion. <laughs> okay, I think I've rambled on enough. I hope the message was still coherent and clear and that I was able to plant some little seeds and, and I hope that they will sprout and, and be nourished and that you will get to walk your unique, beautiful, sacred, blessed path on this earth. Okay. I love you all. And we'll be in touch more. I've got many things I'm working on, but <laughs> I'll be sharing in the near future. Love you. Blessings. Stay strong and stay active. Ciao. And rest as well. Not just active. <laughs> also take care of yourself.